Okay. So about this question, question number 12, basically this is a typical question in calculus that you need to be able to, uh, so this is a typical problem that you need to be able to solve in, in, in calculus. And that needs basically two things. That needs the, that needs the binomial theorem and probably also sequences and series meaning that um, basically in class in class 11 basically chapter 8 is about is about the binomial theorem <coughs> is about the binomial theorem and chapter 9 is about the sequences and series sequences and series so what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to leave this this for now leave it aside I'm not going to answer this question we will continue with these sets of with this set of exercises we will finish them and then we will go back to the binomial theorem and the sequences and series in in, in, in basically in class 11 we will do those two chapters because they will be required in the rest of our work in when, when we get to anywhere in calculus you need to know them otherwise we will get into trouble so we will we will we will finish this this set of exercises and um, then we will go back to the to binomial theorem sequences and series do those two chapters and then we will basically continue with calculus in class 12 so that's what we need to do otherwise there will be problems so so question number 13 question number 13 is uh, uh, again the same story again the same story so question number 13 is as you can see this is all over the place so you have basically question number 12 for example we had f of x is equal to for example ax plus b raised to the power n and question number 13 is f of x is equal to uh, basically ax plus b raised to the power n times for example cx plus d raised to the power m which is essentially the same thing the same type of question but this again needs the binomial theorem so i'm, I'm leaving this here as well we will uh, do question number 14 question number 14 is basically it's the side f of x is equal to sine of x plus a sine of x plus a so well you know that basically f prime of if if you had f of x is equal to sine x then f prime of x would be cos x and uh, we know that basically if, if if f of x is equal to sine of x plus a then a then f prime of x is actually equal to cos of x plus a but we can actually derive that using um, using um, the first principle, I suppose. Right. So, so if I if I assume that if I assume that f of x is equal to sine of x plus a, then you know that basically f prime of x f prime of x is equal to the limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h tends to zero and here f of here f of x plus h would be equal to the sine of x plus h plus a right so then you could write this as the limit of as the limit of basically f of x plus h which is sine of x plus h plus a 
minus sine of x plus a divided by h as h tends to 0. Now, you have sine x minus sine y and sine x minus sine y is equal to is equal to the following. Let me go to mathematics screenshots. And over here, trigonometric functions. And I think this is the one. So sine x minus sine y is 2 cos sine, right? So you have sine x minus sine y is equal to 2 times cos x plus y divided by 2 sine of x minus y divided by 2. Now x plus y divided by 2 in this case would be x plus y divided by 2 in this case would would be in this case would be x plus h plus a plus x plus a divided by 2 which would be 2x plus 2a plus h 2x plus 2a plus h divided by 2 and x minus and x minus y divided by 2 is equal to or would be actually x plus h plus a x plus h plus a minus this thing which is basically negative x negative a divided by 2 and x and x you can cancel out these two you'll be getting h divided by 2. So that means that you can write this as and we said that basically that is 2 cos sine so that is the limit of 2 times cos of this angle, which is basically 2x plus 2a plus h. Divide that by 2 times the sine of basically h divided by 2 over h as h tends to 0. Right? Now I can write this as... I can write this as the limit of sine of h divided by 2 divided by h divided by 2 and we have already talked about this when you divide a, 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 the denominator in a fraction when you have a fraction divide the denominator by anything that means that you're multiplying the whole fraction by the same thing now if you want to take the, the effect of that out you have to you have to, of course, divide the whole fraction by the same thing. And dividing the whole fraction by the same thing, if I do, if I do that, meaning that if I write, if I divide the, the denominator of the, of the fraction by, divide the denominator by 2, I have to divide the whole denominator by, the whole fraction by 2, meaning that then I would then I would divide the, the, the whole fraction by two and then the twos the two twos cancel out. This two will be will be out. And so then I have basically then also the cos of basically two x plus two a plus h divided by two and as h tends to zero, right? So you're taking the limit of this thing here. And then you have the limit of basically sine h divided by 2 divided by h divided by 2 as h tends to 0 times the limit of, and of course here h divided by 2 has to tend to 0. And it does actually because when h tends to 0, h divided by 2 does tend to, tend to 0. And the limit of cos of 2x plus 2a plus h divided by 2 as h tends to 0 right so you're taking the limit of this now you know that the you know that basically the the limit of sine of x divided by x as x tends to 0 is equal to 1 which means that this is equal to 1 and so the that the limit here becomes as as h tends to zero in the limit 
this becomes 2x plus 2a divided by 2, which means that that's x plus a, so that's cos of x plus a, cos of x plus a, and therefore you can say that d by dx of sine x is actually equal to cos of, I'm sorry, d by dx of sine of, d by dx of, over here we had sine of x plus a, so you have sine of x plus a is actually equal to cos of x plus a. That is basically, and as we expected, it actually, it's actually so that um, basically when you have, when you have d by dx of basically sine x, you will get of course cos x. And when you have d by dx of, <coughs> And when you have d by dx of sine of, for example, x plus a, or anything else for that matter, you will have basically the cos of x plus a. And that is basically, that is that, right? This was question number um, 14. We have still a bunch of these questions here, but we will, we will go through them one by one. Okay, so the next question that we have is uh, question number 15, which is basically your f of x is equal to cosecant x cot x. Cosecant x cot x. Now you know that d by dx of, um, so you can use the product rule here, meaning that u v whole prime is equal to u prime times v plus u v prime. And, and so basically you can write this as basically the f prime of x is equal to um, the derivative of the first function times the second function, which is, which is cot x times the derivative of the first function cosecant x plus the first function the cosecant x times the times the derivative of the second function which is d by dx of cot x now d by dx of cosecant x is equal to um, is equal to basically um, d by dx of cosecant x is equal to negative cosecant x, negative cosecant x cot x, and d by dx of cot x is equal to negative cosecant squared x. So then you can write cot x times d by dx of cosecant x is negative cosecant x cot x. So that becomes cot squared x and plus cosecant x times the d by dx of cot x. So d by dx of cot x is negative cosecant squared x. So this becomes a negative sign. This becomes a negative sign and then you will get negative cosecant cube, cosecant cube x. So that is question number, that was question number basically uh, 15. That was question number 15. Uh, okay, so they have to, they have found this actually using the, using the, using the first principle. I see. But we have actually derived all of this using the first principle. So there is, there is really no need to do that. There is really no need to do that. We have already derived all of these functions using the first principle. So then we can use the product rule and then we can write this as negative 
uh, cosecant cube x minus cosecant minus cot squared x times cosecant x. Because we have already done all of that, there is no need to do it really. Okay, so question number question number uh, 16. Question number 16, we have we have basically f of x is equal to uh, basically cos x over 1 plus sin x. Cos x over 1 plus sin x. So, So uh, I can use the product rule here, u by v, and I suppose, let me see, they have again used the, uh, yeah, they have used the product, okay. So u by v raised to the, or, or whole prime is equal to u prime times v minus u v prime divided by v squared, and and so f prime of x, f prime of x is equal to um, u prime times v, which is basically 1 plus sine x times d by dx of, d by dx of cos x minus cos x times d by dx of uh, basically 1 plus sine x and you divide that by basically 1 plus sine x 1 plus sine x whole squared now d by dx of cos x is, is, is of course equal to as you know d by dx of cos x is equal to is equal to negative sine x and d by dx of 1 plus sine x is equal to 0 plus cos x. So that, that would be 0 plus cos x. d by dx of 1 plus sine x is equal to 0 plus cos x. And therefore you can write this as f prime of x is equal to basically negative sine x. Negative sine x times 1 plus sine x. Uh, and over here you have cos x times, uh, you have cos x times negative cos x, which is negative cos squared x over 1 plus sine x all squared. Now this is, <coughs> this is the same thing as basically, <coughs> this is the same thing as negative sine x minus sine squared x minus cos squared x over 1 plus sine x all squared which is the same thing as basically negative of of basically uh, sine x minus sine squared x minus cos squared x over 1 plus 1 plus sine x whole squared and that, that would be of course plus all of these and basically sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to 1 so that is negative of 1 plus sine x over 1 plus sine x whole squared and uh, then here basically you can cancel this out with this and you will get 1 plus sine x 1 plus sine x so that's negative 1 over negative 1 over 1 plus sine x and of course here you need to specify that uh, you need to specify that so 1 plus sine x is not equal to 0, which you already know because it's, it's already written here, so you, you don't need to talk about it. 
if one plus sine x had disappeared and it wasn't here anymore, then you would have to here write one plus sine x is not supposed to be equal to zero, but it's it's already there, so there is no point in doing that. So this was question number uh, 16. Question number 17. Question number 17 is is uh, sine x plus cos x f of x is equal to this is number 17 f of x is equal to sine x plus cos x divided by sine x minus cos x so this is again the same thing as u divided by v whole prime is equal to u prime times v minus u v prime divided by v squared so you can write f prime of x as basically v which is which is sine x minus cos x times d by dx of the numerator which is sine x plus cos x minus sine x plus cos x times the derivative of sine x minus cos x and you divide the whole thing by basically sine x minus cos x all squared now you know that basically the derivative of um, sine x is cos x, the derivative of cos x is negative sine x. So you can write this as basically sine x minus cos x times basically uh, this becomes cos x, this is negative sine x, cos x negative sine x minus, minus sine x plus cos x and the derivative of this becomes cos x and the derivative of cos x is negative sine x times negative is positive sine x so that is basically sine x plus cos x whole squared right divided by sine x minus cos x whole squared and this is equal to sine x minus cos x times cos x minus sine x. So I can write this as the negative of basically, I can write this as the negative of, um, I can write this as, I can take a negative sign out here and write this first expression as cos x minus sine x times cos x minus sine x and over here I have negative of this is cos x plus sine x so that is uh, cos sine x plus cos x all squared divided by sine x minus cos x all squared and that is the same thing as that is the same thing as basically cos x minus sine x whole squared negative of that minus sine x plus cos x whole squared over uh, over sine x minus cos x whole squared and um, And so you can you can of course simplify this. 
meaning that you can write negative of basically cos squared x plus sine squared x minus 2 times sine x cos x minus basically again sine squared x plus cos squared x plus 2 times sine x cos x and divide that by sine x minus cos x whole squared and this would be 1 minus 2 times sine x cos x this would be uh, this, I'm sorry 1 this would be negative of 1 minus 2 times sine x cos x because sine squared x plus sine squared plus cos squared x equal to 1 minus this which is again sine squared x plus cos squared x equal to 1 plus 2 times sine x cos x and so you have divided by sine x minus cos x whole squared and that is equal to and that is equal to basically negative 1 plus 2 times sine x cos x negative 1 minus 2 times sine x cos x and these two you can cancel out and the denominator comes here sine x minus cos x whole squared and that becomes negative 2 over sine x minus cos x whole squared that is the answer there That is the answer to that was question number 17. Okay, so the next question is question number 18. And that is basically... Um, um, secant x minus 1. That is basically f of x is equal to secant x minus 1 over secant x plus 1 there is a x, x over here plus 1 now what they have done is that they have written this as of course you could differentiate this function as it is meaning that you would you know that basically you can write it by d u by v whole prime is equal to basically u prime times v minus u v prime over v squared and then you can write this the, the f prime of x you can write it as basically um, secant x plus 1 times d by dx of basically secant x minus 1 minus basically secant x minus 1 times d by dx of secant x plus 1 and then you could write you could write this as secant x plus one raised to the second power. So this becomes the d by dx of secant x is secant x tan x. So this becomes basically secant x plus one times secant x tan x minus basically secant x minus 1 and then again you have times secant x tan x and divide that by secant x plus 1 whole squared and then you would get something like secant squared x tan x secant squared x tan x plus secant x tan x plus secant x tan x minus secant x secant squared x tan x secant squared x tan x uh, minus secant x tan x minus secant x tan x 
and divide that by secant x plus 1 raised to the second power and then you could write this as basically secant squared x tan x plus secant x tan x minus secant squared x tan x plus secant x tan x over secant x plus 1 raised to the second power and then you can cancel these two out so you would have basically two times secant x tan x over secant x plus 1 all squared now you could write this as you know, secant x is 1 by cos x and tan x is sin x by cos x so this would be the derivative of your function and then this would actually be the derivative of your function and that's actually the answer that they have gotten in the in the in the solution so let's so let's call it the answer and then go to number 19. So question number 19, we have we have uh, sine raised to the power n of x. So sine raised to the power n of x. So I think they have done this using they have used basically um, they have used the um, induction to, to solve this problem. So if you have basically question number 19 we have f of x is equal to sine raised to the power n of x. So if let y be equal to we can say that let y be equal to sine raised to the power n of x. Okay, so accordingly, you can say that for basically for n is equal to 1, y is equal to sine of x, right? So y is equal to sine x, and dy by dx, dy by dx would be equal to basically dy by dx of sine x, <coughs> or dy by dx of sine x, which is equal to cos x. Right? So this is about n is equal to 1. So if n is equal to 2, for n is equal to 2, so you can say that y is equal to sine squared x. And if y is equal to sine squared x, then of course you have, then of course you, you can use the product, the, the Leibniz product rule and write it as sine x times sine x. Right, and write this as basically then uh, then write this as dy by dx. You can write it as basically d by dx of d by dx of sine x times sine x, which is the same thing as well. The product rule would be u v whole prime is equal to u prime that times v plus u v prime. So you would write this as sine x times d by dx of sine x plus sine x times times basically d by dx of sine x. Which is the same thing as basically sine x cos x plus sine x cos x which is equal to 2 times sine x 
Cassius. Which is equal to two times sine x cos x. Now two times sine x cos x is um, let's let's leave it as it is for now. Now for n is equal to three. For n is equal to three, we have y is equal to sine cube x which is equal to which you can write as sine x times times sine squared x so <clears throat> now here dy by dy by dx is equal to d by dx of d by dx of basically sine cube x or you can say sine x by sine x times sine squared x and that is equal to and that is equal to again basically um, that is equal to basically sine squared x times d by dx of sine x plus uh, uv prime so that's sine x times d by dx of sine squared x which is the same thing as sine squared x cos x plus d by dx of sine squared x here we showed that it is equal to 2 times sine x cos x so that is 2 times sine x cos x times sine x is equal to 2 times sine squared x cos x 2 times sine squared x cos x so you have sine squared x cos x plus 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 2 times sine squared cos x is equal to 3 times sine squared x cos x uh, and and then um, so you can you can see that basically when when n is equal to one when n is equal to one you have basically d by dx of sine x so d by dx of sine raised to the power x is equal to cos x d by dx of sine raised to the power x so you can see that d by dx of sine raised to the power one x is equal to cos x you can see that d by dx of sine raised to the power 2 of x is equal to when n is equal to 2 we got 2 sine x cos x 2 times sine x cos x when n is equal to 3 when n is equal to 3 d by dx of sine cube x that is equal to but that is equal to 3 times sine, uh, basically sine squared x times cos x. That means that you can say that probably d by dx of sine raised to the power n of x is equal to n times sine raised to the power n minus 1 of x times cos raised to the power n of x or actually just just times cos x just times cos x n times sine raised to the power n minus 1 x times cos x so that is that is that they call an assertion and and well this assertion we want to prove it this this week you could call an assertion this you could call an assertion or we can say that we assert that we assert that basically the following is true assertion means that you kind of 
you kind of think that something is true, but you don't really know, meaning that you haven't proved it, all right? Now, we need to, basically now, that the things of this nature, we can, we can prove using mathematical induction, meaning that you know that something is true for a couple of cases, and then you want to prove it for n cases, for example. And we have already talked about mathematical induction in this, in this playlist alone. I think you already know about that pr uh, properly. So in the case of mathematical induction, what we do is that we say that basically there is a P of one that we have to, that we have to show that it's true. And then we basically, we make the assumption that P of K is true. And then we prove that P of K plus one is true. And then based on that, we conclude that basically P of N is true. So this is now to, to just give you a short summary of what we said before. We said that we had all of these books uh, laid on their backs all the way up to N books. And this is the first book all the way up to the, the Nth book here. So I want to basically, I want, I know that if I make this food that make this book fall over it will it, it would fall over the second book the second book would fall over this the third book and so on and so forth until the nth book falls over but then i have to prove it the way that the mathematical induction works is that we say that first we show that basically the first book falls over that is p of one meaning that you in this case you just show that when n is equal to 1, your assertion is true, right? And then you can, you can assume that since all of those are true, you can just assume that, um, now based on, not, not, not based on, not exactly based on that, but then uh, how can you prove that really if the first book falls over, that the, that the nth book will inevitably fall over? So that you can do in, in that you basically, that you show that the first book will definitely fall over. So the first book will definitely fall over. And then you need to show that any book that, any book that falls over, as a result of that, the next book will fall over, meaning that the, the, meaning that the first book will fall over, over the second book, the second book falls over. The second book will fall over the third book and the third book falls over and so on and so forth. And if you can show that, then that means that the nth book will inev inevitably fall over. There is no way that it cannot fall over. So based on that, so you have to, first you have to show that P of one is true, meaning that the first book falls over. Then you want to show that any book that falls over the next the, the book after that will inevit inevitably fall over, meaning that any book falling over, P of K, K stands for any book, any case, any book falling over, as a result of that, the next book falls over, meaning that K, if K is true, then we want to prove that P of K plus 1 is true, okay? And then if these three, we can show that, so the first one, P of 1, I have to prove, I have to show that it's true. The, the second one, the P of K, I can assume it. I can assume that if this is the case, then, then P of K plus 1 is true, meaning that then I can assume that P, that P of K is true, and as a result of that, or based on that, I prove that P of K plus 1 is true. And then if I can do that, I can conclude that based on the principle of mathematical induction that P of N is true, meaning that the, that the last book or the nth book will inevitably fall over. Okay. So we will, we will do that. And as you, if you paid attention to, to the, to the process, we already showed that P of 1 is true, meaning that we showed that for N is equal to 1, then y was equal to s, y was equal to sine x, and then d by dy by dx was equal to cos x. That that agrees with 
basically our assertion because we wrote our assertion based on the same thing essentially so p of 1 is true already so now i can i can assume that some p of k is true and so in order to do that uh, i'm going to basically uh, so i can say that let our assertion let our assertion be true let our assertion be true for some for n is equal to k meaning that i i'm assuming that p of k is true meaning that then basically um, the assertion was basically this the assertion that i made was basically this so I'm, I'm going to show that basically I'm going to assume that when n is equal to k that this is true so then I will write basically d by dx of um, when n is equal to k of course when n is equal to k then y would be equal to sine of sine raised to the power k of x and I want to show that basically d by d, or I want to assume that d by dx of sine uh, of sine raised to the power k of x, <coughs> that is equal to wherever you see an n, you have to replace it by by k. So that's k times sine of k minus one of x times cos of times cos of x. So let's assume that this is true, meaning that let's assume that p of k is true. So this is this is assuming that assuming that that p of k p of k is true. Okay. Now, so basically, then that means that d, that means that d by dx of basically sine raised to the power k of x is equal to k times sine 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 raised to the power k minus one times x times cos x. Right. Now, if I want to now based on this assumption. I can calculate the basically the I can I can I can basically calculate I can check what is what is basically d by dx of sine raised to the power k plus one of of x because I want to show that now p of k plus one is true right so that means that now to show that to show that p of p of k plus one is true to show that this is true what i can say is that of course then i can calculate the the the, 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 the derivative of p of k plus one meaning that when n is equal to k plus one so when n is equal to k plus one then y would be equal to sine raised to the power k plus one of x and then dy by dx dy by dx would be equal to d by dx of basically sine of sine raised to the power k plus 1 of x which is the same thing as basically d by dx of sine raised to the power k of x times sine x or you can say sine x times sine raised to the power k. I want to write it that way to agree with the solution. So sine raised to the sine x times sine raised to the power k of x. And then you can use the product rule here, meaning that you can say that u times v whole prime is equal to u prime times v plus u v prime. And then you can write this as basically you can write this as um, v which is sine raised to the power k of x so that would be basically um this 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 function sine raised to the power k 
of x times the derivative of d by dx of sine x plus basically sine x times d by dx of uh, d by dx of sine raised to the power k of x and that is the same thing as basically you know that d by dx of sine x we showed that it is equal to cos x so it's equal to sine raised to the power k of x times cos x plus and we, we over here we assume that uh, basically is d by dx of sine raised to the power k of x which was our, our p of k was uh, was basically k times sine of k raised to the power n minus 1 of x times cos x right so I write it over here k times sine raised to the power k minus 1 of x times cos x and so what I can do is that I can write, I can take basically, um, sine k raised to the power, time sine raised to the power k minus 1. I can take it out. I can take that out. So here I can take a I can take a, a, a cos x. I can take a cos x. So let me see how they have done this. So that's equal to sine raised to the power k of x times cos x plus sine x times oh there is a sine x over here as well I, I this is only the derivative of this and there is there is a sine x over here there is a there is a sine x over here I forgot to write that so this is the same thing as sine raised to the power k of x times cos x plus now sine sine x times sine raised to the power k minus 1 of x would be sine raised to the power k of x so that would be k times sine raised to the power k of x times cos x and that is the same thing as basically that is the same thing as if I if I take basically sine raised to the power k of x times cos x if I take that out I get 1 plus 1 plus k or k plus 1 or k plus 1 k plus 1 times sine raised to the power k of x times cos x which i can write k plus 1 times sine raised to the power k of x times cos x so so that means that then Basically, when k is equal to, when n is equal to k plus 1, when n is equal to k plus 1, that means that when n is equal to k plus 1, then we have y is equal to sine raised to the power k plus 1 of x, and then dy by dx, dy by dx in this case would be equal to k plus 1, uh, times sine raised to the power k of x times cos x and our assumption was that and our assumption was that uh, basically here our assumption was this so if you in this basically in this assumption if you put n is equal to k plus 1, this becomes d by dx of sine raised to the power k plus 1 of x. Um, d, d by dx of sine raised to the power k plus 1 of x, which is this part over here, is equal to n, which is k plus 1, times, the, times sine raised to the power n minus 1, which is k plus 1 minus 1. k plus 1 minus 1 would be k times cos x. So it's, 
it 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 checks meaning that meaning that p of k plus one therefore p of k plus one is true p of k plus one is true and and hence you can say that so now what we have done we have shown that p of one p of one is is true we already showed that over here right we already showed this when we said that when n is equal to one that y is equal to sine x and dy by dx is equal to cos x and then based on this we wrote our assertion which means that p of one is basically automatically true right um, so p of one is true and then what we said that p of k was our was basically our assumption it doesn't need to be true p of k is our assumption and we showed that p of k plus one is true and hence by the hence by the principle of by the principle of mathematical induction mathematical induction p of n is true P of n is true. That is, that is basically P of n is true. Basically, is basically this, this this thing over here, which is d by dx of sine raised to the power n of x, is equal to n times sine raised to the power n minus one of x times cos x, right? So that is basically that. Okay. So I will actually add this to our formulas. I have already uh, gathered a bunch of formulas here from this chapter. And we will continue with questions 20 through 30 in the next video or videos. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.